brought to you by MyRidingCoach.com. So we're going to look at how to hold the reins for the double bridle uh, as well as holding the whip. So just for ease sake, when you're first learning, what I do is just pop the whip down between my knee and the saddle if I'm carrying one. Or if I was to teach this to somebody who was new to the double bridle, the easiest way is hold the reins as if you're holding your ordinary snaffle between the ring finger and the little finger thumbs on top then I'm going to take my middle finger and just hold the curb rein in there like so so this is one option of how to use it the reason I like to do this is that you have independence in the reins so I can either squeeze on the snaffle and that's where the most pressure will be when I close my fingers on the reins or I can use the curb and I can shorten those independently as well. Now so you'll see here that the rein actually looks to cross in underneath the snaffle. This guy's a bit impatient today, the flies are biting. Okay so you'll see that crosses over so from the the ground it will look as though the reins are crossing. All right and the idea is to have the snaffle rein as the firmer rein just a slight loop in the curb. Okay so that's a, the, the more traditional method of holding the double bridle and the reins and then the slack of the reins particularly if you're in the show ring generally sits to the right for dressage it really doesn't matter it can be a personal preference so again here you'll be looking at being able to use the snaffle rein very independently of the curb rein now some people will do this where they just separate those reins between the ring finger and the middle finger and they don't separate it with this finger so it will just sit closed like so I find this gives me a little less independence when I'm adjusting the reins but again perfectly acceptable. Another way in which uh, people will use the double bridle when they train is to hold the snaffle rein coming in and over. So again I'll just drop the curb rein so you can see this. You'll hold the snaffle rein like so and feed it through the ring finger and little finger and then you'll pick up the curb rein it sits in under the little finger and comes between the ring finger and middle finger or alternatively just sits in over the top. So what this is doing is again allowing you adjustability so that you can adjust the snaffle or the curb rein in more independently of one another. Here if I use this sort of pressure it gives a more upward type of pressure on the snaffle and when you start with more collected work that becomes important we're not just trying to get the horse's head down we need to find a different angle at which he takes the connection and then simply by lifting my hands more I get more leveraging effect on the curb so a big strong horse when you're going for an extended canter down the long side and he decides he doesn't know how to find his brakes just a momentary lifting and that they um, uh, feel an increased pressure on the bridle and then it's instantly dropping the hands again and putting the horse back into the snaffle. So to shorten the reins, if I'm just holding the reins in that traditional method, which again for myself personally I like to have the snaffle rein as I would always hold it curb rein between the ring finger and the middle finger and coming up through the middle finger and the pointer. Okay so if I need to shorten I will take each of the reins in the opposite hand, slide that hand down the reins. Now I can either shorten just the snaffle so I might only hold the snaffle rein and shorten it so the curb rein comes looser as you'll see there or I can hold both reins and slide my hand down both. So this becomes important when you're uh, going transitioning from a free walk or an extended walk uh, back into a collected walk. 
all right so again here I'm either going to shorten only the snaffle by just taking that snaffle rein either with my thumb or I can reach across and take it with my pointer finger or I'm going to take both and slide the hands up the reins again and there I can keep the reins in a nice forward manner towards the horse's mouth. So again when you're using the reins it's more of a squeeze like you're squeezing water out of a sponge and you'll feel the horse change the shape of the back and the neck if you apply a little bit of leg and seat pressure as well. All right, then to lengthen the reins, obviously you're just going to let those slide out. Now here I'm at a standstill, so the horse isn't actually lengthening the frame, but ordinarily as I let the reins out, the horse's frame would also lengthen. Brought to you by MyRidingCoach.com